Yeah, it's very, <laughs> it's very nice having you here. And actually, you look, you look, you know, today something is happening with you. It's like you are... Energy has yeah, changed. Yeah, energy has changed. Yeah, it's great. Uh, mine too, you know. It's, yeah. yeah, it's perfect. Uh, all this, the war, fear to stuff going on in the world, but yeah, wars going on so many places now and competing f people fighting each other and so. The male energy, the power energy, pushing, pushing, pushing. And... It's actually doing a lot of harm to the, you can say, the heart chakra in people and of course in women because women take care of children and give birth to children and who, who wants their child to be sent into war, Nobody. to fight a war. Nobody. But it, it seems like all this war stuff is going on again like we have talked so many times before about to lock us in the physical realm. It's, it's they attack all the time so that we will not climb up it's we should be in the fear state all the time fear is the great control factor of course but yeah that's true but on the other hand when you look at history there has been always wars as long as humankind has been on this planet there's yeah. been wars so when you think of a possibility and that of course is is a goal that there would be universal please peace on this planet no wars, no killing of other people because of their religion, because of their skin color, mm. because of their opinions, because of whatever reason. Now that is a great goal, but are we going to get it someday and when? We are moving now. We are in a, we are in a kind of dualistic period now in, when we are according to the Mayan calendar. It's, it's also, it's, you, you don't have to know, know all about the Mayan calendar, but it's just about what kind of period are we in. We are in a period now that's dualistic, but the, the underlying theme is ethics. So actually it's all about we have to confront ourselves and say, hey, what are we doing that is bad ethics? But we are entering into, a, you can say, a, a unity period from November this year, 2010. And that means actually we, we, we should start now mirroring ourselves and say, hey, what is this behavior doing? Am I creating more conflict, more debate, more discussions now? Or am I contributing to uplifting, to sharing, to, to caring, to give love, make love in this world? Because peace has to do with love. Of course. But the power elite doesn't like love. They like control. Yeah, and if you think of the Mayan calendar, there's a lot of articles about it today and, and in the future too. It has also created fear to people because many have, in my mind, disinterpreted it, yeah. thinking that that is the end. Yeah. You know, that's it, finished. A new beginning. That's exactly, and there is no end. The Mayan calendar never says that that would be, you know, the end yeah. of the world or whatever. Yeah. It's going to maybe be the end of this kind of negative thinking, and a new kind of thinking, a new kind of world mm. could emerge, yeah. a new kind of consciousness. Exactly. And that is the big change. So we should look forward to it instead of, you know, being afraid or, or living in fear and yeah. what are we going to do? No, just live in the now and send good energies. And exactly, that's, that's a very good point because the 2012 but it's also because many people, they're just they're sitting and waiting, you know, watching, uh, watching the TV and <laughs> eating more cookies and waiting for the days to come. But they haven't realized, or many haven't realized, many have, but many ha have not, that they are co-creators, that whatever they experience, they are part of, in a sense. Um, so, but, you know, we have to... Uh, yeah, it's, it's really about, you, you know, when if you are going to run a marathon, you have to practice a little. You have to go for some runs here and there. You know, I tried once without training, and I suffered a year afterwards with a, a hanging arm, and, and so. But we have to start training. You know, we can train like we have done today with the roses, or we can just start. You know, ask ourselves what it is that we really want to experience, because as you know, what you do to others, you do to yourself. Mm -hmm. So when we kill others, when we go to war, and of course the soldiers are just uh, many mind control and obey orders and so, but if we kill, for instance, all these wars going on here, when we kill other people, we kill ourselves. So actually right. we are killing a part of our heart, so actually all people who know military people or soldiers or whatever, we should start not being afraid of, of talking to each other and say, hey, could this be another way? Could we flip this whole world in another direction. Well, actually, statistics seem to show that in America, 
more soldiers are committing suicide than now dying in their wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Hmm. That shows something, because if more soldiers are committing suicide, it means that their heart is broken. Something has happened, hmm. and they can see that this is meaningless. This is just for the power elite. This is just to get drug money and, 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 and the bad things. And young people, young soldiers, males and females, are usually idealistic and they mm. want to, you know, we fight for our country. And then they go there and they see that they just have to kill children and civilians and, and for what? Yeah. They can't take it. No. And that should, I think, be more publicized yeah. because that would shake up people that, you know, they can't, the soldiers can't take this. They're good people at yeah. heart and they rather commit suicide yeah. than continue killing civilians and innocent people, whom the elite calls terrorists. Yeah. Uh, I recall that uh, Times magazine uh, a few years ago made a gallop asking what is the, the greatest uh, uh, danger, what country uh, is, is, is the most dangerous in the world. And almost 80% of the gallop said USA. They didn't say it was Afghanistan or Iraq or, you know, Al-Qaeda or something, yeah. which is just, uh, you know, they have just uh, invented that name they have to have something yeah. for the enemy name yeah. i heard that it was something to do with cia database base or something this yeah. name yeah. but uh, the major thing is that you have an enemy and uh, how do you deal with an enemy you don't need to go no. with guns you can deal with totally diplomatic yeah. relations yeah. but of course that is peace yeah. and it was shocking to me to find out and it wasn't many, many years ago that I found out because I, I was always wondering why do the secret services harass peace uh, uh, movements? Mm. I thought, isn't it good for people that there's mm. peace? You know, they, they have peace uh, yeah. uh, demonstrations with all kinds of uh, yeah. sayings there, make love, not war, whatever. Yeah. And they're always filmed, every one of them, by the secret yeah. services. Still, and then they, yeah, yeah. And then they harass these people. Yeah. Why? I couldn't understand, now I know, because yeah. the elite wants war, yeah. wants confrontation, wants people killed, wants to have the power and the control. And all yeah. the people of every single country, whether it's Afghanistan or whether it's, it's Norway or Denmark or yeah. USA, the man on the street, the woman on the street do, does not want war. But no, that's exactly, but it's looked like, you know, I have wondered many years because how come they, they don't do anything and so and then of course I see it's they are part of a grid you can say the power control elite and so they're working in a kind of dimension that's a kind of frequency or energy and they are locked that's into right. this that's right and uh, what they are trying to do is actually they're trying to block our minds totally so we will not have the spirit connection so we will not have the spirit uh, connection to the divine and I see it as three steps you can say we have the third dimension or uh, this reality and that's where the power elite are trying to 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 hold on and then we have the fourth dimension and I say the fourth dimension is actually the mind to have the clear connection to open up so it will bzzz, uh, and you know we can transform both ways our experiences up to the field of consciousness and we can uh, draw from that consciousness into new experiences and then we have the fifth dimension which is of course of the love and if uh, I don't know if you have watched it or people have watched the movie called The Fifth Element I have, um, no. otherwise we can watch this afterwards it's so expressing you know the love the power of love actually what happens when the power of love is being ignited and it's yeah like you have talked a lot about the light but it's like when when love is really is really ignited you know it's like you you the light shines through you you become so much more yeah yeah, because then you emit the love frequency. I know I have a good friend in, in Norway, and she says sometimes that when I get really angry, she says, I can't be in this room because your energy is so strong that it makes me physically sick. Yeah. And I said, I'm not angry at you. I'm angry at these elites who want to destroy us. But still, she was in the same room, and, and I did not know until she pointed it out yeah. that it goes straight yeah. out, and whoever happens to be there gets hit yeah and we don't think that when we get mad at something you know yeah. we don't think that whoosh, i emanate a negative energy and it hits people around me it has an effect and and then if i'm in harmony and and loving yeah. uh, you know attitude yeah. like uh, today i had uh, healing with the tibetan 
balls. Yeah. It was incredible because uh, because I had never experienced that a Tibetan ball, you know, it, it gives a sound, of course, and there are different sizes and different sounds, but I got a little demonstration.